Oh, it's a couple more blades. I'm making a start on the K-Bar Warthog. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to beef up this section here and put some steel on it and get it welded up. That way, it doesn't matter what medium in terms of wood or my car or whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to have plenty of pinnable steel around there and I can really get the handle strong because that's the way I work. Okay, so I'm going to basically tankify this warthog. So I've marked out on the mild using my pillar drill. So I've got grind guidelines and cut guidelines in a far easier way of doing it than mask and tape and pen. So I've just stumped around there with a, with a pillar drill. So let's get cut. <laughs> Okay, now that dark look there, that shiny, is this. It's a permanent marker drawn on. So a big fat marker pen. I'm using an old pair of dividers. So a, a, quite a hard steel with a very fine point. I haven't got a scriber, but this will do just fine. I'm now going to lay the warthog up against there and wherever I think I want it which is there gonna hold it down and then scribe through the permanent marker pen now old school you'd have used engineers blue which is like a blue wash that you painted onto the, the metal and then scribe through. Well permanent marker works just fine. Like that. All right, a little bit further. So I can see that quite well, whether you can on the camera or not. Let's double check. Yeah. Scribe line there. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, so I've scratched through the pen and into the metal, which won't move, whereas a decal or a template taped on, double sided on, it might move. Um, I can dunk this in the water if it gets hot the pen won't lift or move around like a template would so it's a bit more permanent for me so I am now drill out the majority of that section where the tang's going to go and then file it out so it's a reasonably good fit and I'll take it to my oppo down the road and they'll get it welded up so I'll see you in a bit and that is twice as easy as going through tool steel. If I was doing that through a leaf spring, that would have been an absolute battle. Even when it's annealed. So, see me little plan there. Scribe date, mark date. Done a bit of a pilot starter hole off. Sort of, sort of three mil. So the tent's got something to find. Keep on drilling through. See you in a bit. Uh, obviously with a 10 mil in there. I've clamped that on there pretty damn hard. I don't want that getting loose. Okay, so you might be saying, why am I going all the trouble of drilling out most of that slot when I can just freehand cut it? Well, if all those people have been able to use a pillar drill or a pistol drill you know if there's a hole next to where you're trying to drill the first thing the drill bit wants to do is not drill where you want it but dive down the hole that's already drilled so if I've got that drilled out if the grinder decides to not go in one way I'm hoping it's going into the hole side so I won't go outside of where that scribe line is 
so I've drilled it out first just to uh, I don't want to scrap this piece so I want to do this once and draw it take me time so I'll try my damnedest to get as close to the line as I can so I've got less filing to do but if the disc wants to slip off one way I'm hoping it'll go into the holes the piece I want removed anyway more readily than across the side and out of the work that I want left behind we'll find out I don't know, I've never done it before I've done engineering stuff but if I get this wrong I'll have to go back and cut the whole piece out again I'd rather take my time there we go then nothing like having a go is there so mask off a second dust mask on Your defenders, mask, gloves, mask down. Cool so far, just going along the line, and where it skipped is going in the hole. So, seeing a bit, I do some more. I change the disc first. So. Yeah. Getting the bore off. I'm still wearing my mask because the dust is in the air like crazy, so I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna take a chance on it. Well, something like that. Stronger. 
see the original one there it's welded fully welded ground back and you end up with that still keep the lanyard hole it's all ground up inside there nice thumb ramp there Oil underneath, all done, and I'm just gonna gently play around over the next couple of days until I get a really comfortable feel handle. I mean, it's a fighting blade. There's not much else you can do with it. It's got, it's got a clip point and it's a sort of full swedge. Um, so you want a sort of battle looking appearance, um, but I wanted it still quite lean and mean. I'm gonna take a little bit more off the top of that hump, I think. But I like the rear back end of that. Oh, that's quite bitchy. Look at that. So it's still, it's still quite a functional blade. And, um, uh, you know, grabbing all of it, comparable with the rubbery handle that were on these K bar warthogs, this is now something that's you know, a lot more purposeful. When you look at that front end, you got a thin piggy, piggy tail on the end. That is going to be really strong bitchingly strong. Um, we've got to drill the um, lanyard hole out maybe, find a bit of tube. I don't know if I'll leave it as wood and the lanyard can go through as it is anyway. Uh, we've got the pins to drill out but as it is, customised cable warthog. Super job. Catch you later. Just got my six plates. Oh! Oh, Mitchell with Nom. The only snag is I've got dust in the air, so I've got to religiously now go into the kitchen and wash my hands and do it there, so I can't see me eat it. Shame, eh? It may be later. I have to wash my hands. Can Normally when I do that, I do that first, before the groin's been in the air. But because the groin's up in the air, and my hands are like this, I'm going to have to stop what I'm doing, come in, wash up, and then eat. Nice trailer. Nom nom. See you in a minute, Mitch.